Hi there, it's Ed from Dudley Piano here and today we're going to have a look at some grade 5 examples for listening and they call it oral tests or um, listening and singing I like to call it because that's basically what you're doing we're going to go through some examples from this ABRSM book and see what you might come across in the listening part of the exam just demystify it a wee bit because I don't think it's as hard as some people think okay right the first part is to sing or play from memory a melody that you'll hear twice okay here's an example So listen out for the notes, how far apart they are, and what the rhythm's like as well. One more time. Okay. So you'd want to be singing or playing the la 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 la. You know those big jumps at the start. They're bigger than the previous grades. Okay, the jumps are going to be maybe thirds or fourths. Maybe this one. La la la. So there's one you want to capture. The other one, la la. So that's a shorter one, that's a third. And then the smooth quavers, the fast notes at the end, la 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 la. So it's stepping and then there's a wee skip in there as well. Here's another example. And the minor key. Listen for the profile of the notes, pitch-wise, and the rhythm as well. One more time. So you'd be trying to sing. La, 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 la. Most of them are actually steps, yeah. Most of the notes were quite close together. La, 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 la. There's a skip in there. La, la, la. You have the dotted rhythm as well. So there's some examples of what to listen for and how to listen. And you see me doing this a lot. There's the two things, the pitch and the rhythm. Okay, so you can hear what's going on there. The other bit of singing you do is singing in free time, they call it, from a piece of paper. A bunch of notes and you just sing them. Yeah, as they're written. Now, just take it steadily. You get given the notes that you start on and also the key chord as well. La. So get that into your brain, get it into your ear and get that first note. La. So there's my D for example. And most of them are a step or a skip up or down. Yeah, sometimes they jump a bit further but this one is starting with a step up. So if you know what your major key is for example. La, 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 so there's a nice easy step, la, la, then it goes under the tonic or under the root note, la, 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 yeah, so we're going up, we're skipping down, we're skipping up again, and then going up, and then skipping down again, so, la, 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 and then la, la, but you sing them all kind of in slow motion, yeah. La 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 And I've often said to students, the louder you can sing the better. Even if you don't feel very confident, sing quite loud because you'll get a better sound on your voice. My voice is not in great shape at the moment, but sing loudly, yeah. Because if you sing really quiet like a mouse, you tend to go flat or a bit off key, yeah. So sing as loud as you can. At the end of the day, it's only a few notes, so I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Let's pick another example. What will we go for? One of the bass ones. I'll pick that, I'll suit my voice. Okay. This also happens to be in D, but this time instead of stepping, we're skipping at the la. So in, inside I'll be thinking, what's the third la? There's that note, yeah? So we're going to F sharp. La then down down da up down. Yeah, so you're coming back to your tonic again. So it's a slightly different order, mainly the same notes to be honest. So it's whether you have a step or a skip first or last. 
and sometimes a jump. I call them steps, skips and jumps for second, third and fourth. So we're going to get La Yeah La So you're looking for your skip your step and sometimes a jump Yeah, so when you look at the score try and pitch kind of what the scales are I think these are all major key Yep They all seem to be major key so that's a good thing to start with you're going up and down what to do to practice then is sing your scales as you're playing along to your instrument, if you're able to do that. Maybe not if you're playing a flute or something, but if you're playing a piano or another instrument where you can sing at the same time, sing along with your scales. That'll improve your ear and also your singing voice. There only is one other section, C. So that's your listen to a piece and answer questions about the style and the period and maybe the dynamics or the character or all these different kinds of things, right? Listen for the dynamics, right? Okay. What did you notice right away there? Hopefully you could hear it's pretty loud, very loud in fact at the start. And even louder and then suddenly went so. So that's the kind of things you're listening out for. What changes? And what's the kind of range of the dynamic? You can hear that? Yeah. So you're listening out for how it's played, the texture of the music, what's going on, what are the hands doing, and um, what's the melody doing, the accompaniment. Are there ornaments? Did you hear that ornament there? Yeah, a little mordant in there, a little wiggly note. Um, yeah, and that kind of goes along like that for quite a while. And then at the end, it's back to... Something like that, yeah. So re really loud at the end and quite accented. But there you go. One of the questions is describe the dynamics in the piece. So you'd be like, Oh, it started very loud, and then I got quiet in the middle, and then it was loud again. And what gives it its character? So it's how those notes are played. The brashness of the chords at the start, and then the smoothness of the part in the middle. You know, things like that. Is it Baroque, classical, or 20th century? Hopefully you could listen right away and go, it's definitely not classical. It's extreme changes of dynamics in there, which makes me think it's not Baroque, because Baroque tends to be a little more... Uh, similar in its dynamics, if it's on a harpsichord or something, you know? um, And radical changes of key, you know, from... So that points me towards the modern end of the music, yeah. So you really think in 20th century for that kind of music. Strong chords, wide dynamic range, accent, sudden changes, some dissonance, contrast between major and minor. So these are things that mark it out as being 20th century. I've said in the other videos often, I'd be thinking, what is it definitely not? Yeah. So yeah, certainly 20th century. Right, let's pick up one more example. There's going to be different. Oh, there is some clapping we might do as well. We'll, do, we'll cover that in this example. So here's one. Have a listen for the articulation this time, okay? smooth legato. Is it Baroque, Classical or Romantic? What do you think? Hmm. A little pedal in there. So pedal pretty much rules out Baroque. Classical or Romantic? Hmm. Have a think about it. Is it regular and 
sounding like a bit of Beethoven or Mozart, or is it a bit more variable, sounding more like Chopin or somebody like that? Yeah, which one is it towards? The romantic era, yeah. It's got more pale, it's got more light and shade in the in the way it's played. I must admit, I quite like it as well. It's a Chopin piece, yeah. Um, what features suggest that? Now, pedal's the obvious one. There's not a rope. And the chords, the way the chords are played, and... Yeah. The rubato is also listed in the way this is played, so the tempo is going to be changeable all the way through. It's not as uh, steady as a classical piece might be. Okay, so you're listening out for things like that. What characterises the music? So, there would be a question about clapping, and you get to hear this a couple of times. Yeah, so listen closely for that rhythm. Be able to sing out, sing in two time, three time, or four time. Could you tell from that? Hopefully, you can hear it's in a three time, it's a waltz. Uh, I've said before in the, the lower grade videos, a uh, two time is usually a march or a walk, one, two, one, two. A three time is usually like a waltz or a dance, a one, two, three, one, two, three. And then the four time is a, has a longer period between the, the accents. So, uh, Four. One, two, three, four. So it's a much longer bar length and also phrase length usually. So listen out for how many beats to the bar really, that's where you're listening from there. Okay, and I think I'm going to round up about there, but basically don't get too stressed about the listening part. Open your ears up wide and listen to all that you can hear. And um, plenty of practice will help. We've got videos on here that have proven very successful for people practicing their listening, their singing, their clapping, etc, etc. And just get your ears open to as much music as you can and just sing along if you can as well. Okay, so I'm going to say bye for now, so thanks for watching and bye for now.